back in the studio here in Indianapolis on a fairly cold winter day. Yeah. And I'm happy to have Lyle Nogard and Drew Oldorfer with us. And today, what we're going to be looking at is the recently introduced Capture One version 12. Now, I go way, way back to Capture One, all the way back to version three. So the, the genesis of this and the evolution of this has just been amazing. But uh, there have been some new steps taken. And since Lal is phase one's chief visionary, going to let Lal tell us a little bit about the steps and the thought process of going from version 11 to version 12, because there's some pretty interesting, cool things in version 12, which we're going to show you in a second. But let's talk a little bit about how you get to that point where you make decisions and decide what is an update and what is a version change. So it's a combination of workflow improvements, feature improvements, and adding features, and then kind of large scale improvements that will enable us to do things in the future. Uh, and Capture 12, I think, is a good example of that. There are a lot of little, little improvements that just makes it work better. Yep. Um, and then there are some bigger, significant things that kind of lead ahead, where we're just opening up now. Some of the things we've done is we have uh, we've overhauled the, the look and feel of the UI. This, of course, helps in kind of everyday uh, operations and application. It makes it, it looks fresh, of course, but it also is, is uh, it's, it's simpler to, to work with the tools. They're a bit more clean, uh, easier to grab the little handles and so on. But we've also done this to prepare for the application expanding, to, to add more as it becomes more and more complex, have more and more features. We have to work hard in, in still making it easy to use. So we did a lot of the UI uh, kind of groundwork to prepare for that. Two other areas where we did the same uh, kind of preparations for new while still making wonderful things in 12 are the masks and the plugins. Um, masking, in a lot of images, you need masks for kind of only affecting parts of the image. Um, and there we did a couple of new things in, uh, in Capture One 12. One is the luminosity masking that I believe we will yeah. dig into because I think that is a, oh, a, very, a very, very powerful new feature to allow you to just grab certain areas of the image. But we couple that with uh, with parametric masks, so that when you when you make masks like gradients or or radial masks, they are parametric, so that even after you make them, you can still tweak them and modify them. So parametric means you're not really you're you're sort of non-destructive or something. What would you actually say? Yes, I get that question a lot. You know, it's a okay, pretty yeah. big word. You know? So so uh, the masks are parametric in the way that they are they are created based on a few numbers, yep. and you can keep on changing those numbers forever essentially. So they're not becoming pixels. Okay. Um, and what we did there is that we made parametric radial and linear masks. But also, mainly, we made the engine to have more flexible masks, more kind of expandable masks options in the future. So it's, that's a combination of making a new engine so that we can go in new directions, yep. and at the same time, here and now, creating very useful features. Uh, and we made the, the luminosity mask and the gradient masks work nicely together also. I think when we, we get into this, I think the luminosity mask is probably worth the price of admission alone. When, uh, as a photographer, and you even going back to uh, the days of dodging and burning in the darkroom, I mean, essentially what we're dealing here with luminosity mass is be able to pick a range, yeah. a tonal range for, I think it would be a tonal range, yeah. wouldn't it? And apply a mass just to that area and then apply the corrections or changes that we want right to that area. Yes. It, it all, it, I did a shot in, in Scotland once, and I did a lot with without the mm -hmm. uh, luminosity masking, but kind of almost doing many scales of luminosity masking yes. by building masks on top of each other. And I call it god lighting, because in a sense, you've got control of yeah. uh, the light in, in this sense. So yeah. this is a really cool feature, and we're going to go into it. You have to see it to believe it and see understand yeah. how powerful it is. But uh, it, it works really, really well. So it's both very powerful in what you can create with it, but it's also very powerful in how efficient you can create that. That's, yeah, so and we've designed it in the way so that you can actually, you can use it on one image, and you can apply it to a number of similar images. 
So we focus very much on Capture One, of course, being powerful for editing images, but also very much being powerful for editing many images. So the kind of the batch aspects. Right. And the way Luminosity Mask works actually lends itself nicely to, to being applied to, to a range of images. What I, what I see applying here, so as a landscape photographer, for example, I might mm -hmm. shoot a scene and I might have uh, a wide angle or a close-up scene, but really the lighting hasn't changed. Yes. However, the tonality is going to be the same in the images, cropped or uncropped, wider angle. So, you know, once I apply it, it can go across the board to all the images yes. Yes. and be applied just to the tonality of those. And typically you'd also have a kind of, even if you shoot with the same lens, the same field of view, you'll have a number of exposures and working with them and figuring out which one is right. kind of the golden yeah. one. Those edits can be applied to all of them. You can, and which, then you pick the one you yeah, really want to work on. Yeah, which makes it easier. You can yeah. get to a final step by working on one image quicker. Or of course, if you, if, you, if you shoot people yep. and your end result actually is a, is a number of images. Like, like with the, shoot with, with the, the extreme case of a wedding photographer. Yep. Yep. Then it's really, a time saver. Amazing. Saving. It's that really, was, really a time saver. It's going to be saving. really cool that way. Yeah. Now, you, you changed and did a lot with the interface as far as like the type fonts and yes. readability and yeah. scalability. You know, how do you go about deciding that? I mean, the, the, such a, I, I used to squint at the white type on black. <laughs> yes. And you, you've picked a really nice font now. Yeah, I think it's, that has to be an iterative process. It's kind of, you cannot kind of upfront specify, we will make this and we'll get it right. You start to work on it and we've worked on this for 25 years. Yeah. So, so it's kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a methodical iterative process where slowly we make things better. We tweak it, we use it. The developers use it, our product managers use it. We have a lot of people in house that are photographers by, by training and by passion. So uh, it's, that enables us to just continuously discover little things and, uh, and work with it. You you know, get, we I, take a lot of feedback also from all, the, all our users. This is also kind of an interesting story, and I, if I digress for a second, but uh, we all know about the Fuji X-Trans sensor, mm -hmm. and because it wasn't a bear pattern sensor, a lot of people had a hard time adapting to it. Yeah. Now, what I when, when Lau talks about his team, and they're all believers in photography, a lot of them were very passionate about the Fuji camera. Yeah. And as a result, just so they could actually have a raw processor that worked well for them, you know, they really dove deep into the X-Trans yeah. sensor to maximize, you know, how Capture One handled those yes. files. And yes. that's been a big debate, you know, across all many forums in different places, you know, who makes the best X-Trans converter. But I have yet to see one that, you know, can do better than Capture One. Yeah. And now you have a special relationship with Fuji. Yeah, so that team is sent you the, the, the Bayer processing team. They do that based both on, of, of course, the, the math and the, the science of it, but also the passion for, for cameras, for photography. So, so the conversion, for example, for the X-Trans is based on really digging in, understanding that sensor, understanding why is it different from the other sensors? How can we make this shine? And I think that goes for many of the things we make. We, we combine that kind of scientific math-driven approach with a genuine Love of photography. Yeah, passion. Yeah. And you can see it when you visit the, the offices. It's uh, quite quite special to see everybody like, Ugh, you, know, you know, looking over each other's shoulders and adjusting things and really working very hard towards that. Another major thing we did in, in Capture One 12 is that we, uh, we opened up the plugins. And we see that as a kind of embracing the the community, the, the, the world of photography tools. So, so uh, with Capture One, it's kind of the, the hub of your workflow. We know that, that all photographers use other tools in their workflow. We wanna, we wanna integrate well with them. We, wanna, we want Capture One to, to grow in all kinds of interesting directions. And by, by enabling anybody to make plugins, we, we can kind of get the, yeah. the best of all worlds. Well, this is something a lot of people have asked for. So I would envision you might go to plugins to different third parties. Right now, you're going to be working with uh, Prodigy is, I think, one of the first ones. At least that's the one I got a notification for beta. Mm -hmm. And this would allow you to upload albums so that you can view them on the web at uh, 100%. Yes, size. because because uh, all our photos, they, they typically have to go somewhere. Photography is a, 
in many cases, it's a, so, it's a, it's a social thing. Right. It's a collaborative thing. So your images, <clears throat> you work with them, Capture One, but they have to go somewhere. So one of the first initiatives around plugins is specifically that. So I make my images, my albums, my all my edits in Capture One, and then I upload them somewhere. I integrate with with all the different portfolio sites. Well, I think this is going to be one of the big, big, big parts. Is you know you can work so far into uh, an image with Capture One, but there are so many now third-party programs out yeah. there: uh, Luminar, On One, uh, Topaz. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, be able to get into any one of these, and I presume somebody's going to eventually develop the plugins to, to yeah. be able to go back and forth. Yes. And I presume the whole goal of this is to do, uh, as we would call it in the Photoshop, the round tripping. Yes. So yes. It, it adds terrific possibilities, and you know, of course the images can then actually sit right with the RAWs. So, so, so some of what we've done now is kind of, we've done the infrastructure of opening up for plugins, and then over the next, uh, I don't know how many releases, we will expand that. So we've done, seen from my point of view, we've taken the first step into plugins. But the exciting thing is that this is just beginning it. Uh, and by opening up for, for third parties, for, for integration, for like being a nice citizen, integrating well with others, we think Capture One can be so much more. Yeah. For those of you that are, are trying to make a decision on raw image processors, um, Capture One offers a buy program, meaning you can buy the software outright yep. as a license. You own it forever. And or you can also do subscriptions. Mm -hmm. In addition, one of the big benefits of Capture One for me is sessions. Any of you that use any of the other programs where you need to build a catalog, yep. and you're on a ship in Antarctica, and you're shooting pictures, and then you have to come back and try to merge catalogs onto a different drive later on. Until you work with a session, and sometimes the word session can kind of like, you know, get a little cloudy because it's hard to understand, but it's a folder, and inside that folder are all the elements. Yes. The RAWs, the, the output, the adjustments. Mm -hmm. So essentially, when you come back from a trip and you've been working, say, on your laptop with a session, and you've got, you know, a, a big RAID system at home for storing all your, your work. Yeah. All you got to do is just drag that over to the RAID system in the folder itself, yeah. and then just reopen it back up, and it's that simple. So essentially, it's a, it, it comes from the kind of the commercial photography, studio photography background that this is this session. This, is, this was this job. It's, it's there. It's, yeah. I pack it up. I move it. I hand it over. And for, as you say, uh, landscape photography. It's this trip, I am on this trip, I make this session. It goes there, I back it up, I move it over there. And of course I can import it later on if I want to have a large collection, searchable collection. But you can kind of work separate with these and they, it's, it's simple, it's clean, it's, 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 it's productive. Yeah, it's productive. Yeah. Now, you have catalogs too. Now this is the only company that makes a, a system like this. Now here's how I work and why I love this so much. You can make a giant catalog if you want, but for the number of images that I shoot each year, a giant catalog would be completely unmanageable. Yeah. So what I do is I make a catalog by each year. So I'd have a catalog for 2018, and once I've kind of worked my session, got my output, and pretty happy with it, I will import it into my catalog. Because therefore, when I'm actually writing or doing something and I want to go into metadata and do a, a search, uh, for like everything shot with a Sony 100 or 400 G mm -hmm. master lens. It's very simple to do that and it expands and goes through the whole yeah. multiple sessions that I've shot. However, one of the other things I like to do is not just catalog by year, but catalog by uh, topic. Yeah. So I've made many trips to Antarctica, Svalbard, Norway, Iceland. So I have catalogs built for each of these that, you know, I now can go to one spot and see all my Iceland pictures mm -hmm. and do smart searches on any of those different things along the way. Like, where are all my four stars for the last five trips to uh, these things? So the catalog yeah. feature is also quite nice. And the catalog feature does not interfere with the images in the session. So yeah. how I do it is I start a catalog and I actually point the catalog to the capture folder inside a session. And it reads from there to build the catalog. Now, as long as you don't move mm. anything, and once it's on my 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 RAID yeah. system, it stays it fairly stays there. intact. Yeah. You know, it, it works perfectly, yeah. and it's also nice because when you do catalogs, 
say a catalog for 2018, it's small enough that I can actually take it with me on a drive or even if I have enough storage space on my laptop and I can work on it mm -hmm. and then come back and then I can drag it over and it replaces the catalog and yep. updates everything and it's quite, quite simple. So this stuff is brilliant and it saves a lot of time. So when we're going to get in and show you some of the new features, you got to understand that, but the actual foundation that you have this thing built on and how it works is some of the biggest strengths that Capture One brings to the, the whole thing. Thank you. If you're considering a raw processor that's going to do everything for you, grow in the future. And this is the one thing that you've heard a couple times if you've been watching some of our other videos is that phase one is always looking towards that future. So, wow, well, thanks, man. I, I, I was waiting for this and it was so Thank nice you. when, you know, the the masking features alone yeah. and, and everything and the new interface and the look and the feel make the price of admission great. And one of the things that I must compliment you on is, is how fast you can scroll through the images. Once you've decided on your proof size and everything, yeah. the speed of Capture One just never leaves you hanging and waiting. It's We try to make it responsive and all about well, getting the job done, yeah, having fun with photography. It's quite a powerful uh, software. And, uh, once you get past the curve and you know get your head wrapped around it, uh, you're going to wonder why it took so long to move over to it if you haven't done so already. Once again, thanks, Al, Thank very you. much. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll be back for some real in-depth look at some of the features.